Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to day number 22 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to model an earbud in the Sculpt environment. We'll take a look at how to create a box, how to select faces and edges, and how to use the crease command. Before we get started, I want to point out that this tutorial is going to be a very basic sculpting tutorial. If you're new to the Sculpt workspace, then you're in the right place. I'm also pondering the idea of creating an entire series on sculpting, but only if there's enough viewer interest. So if you are interested, then please comment below and let me know. You should also understand that mastering the sculpt or T-spline environment simply takes time and hours of practice. You'll need to get very familiar with the commands, as you'll see in this lesson that just by holding down one single key, it can make all the difference in the results you get. Now let's get started by hitting the Create Form button in the toolbar, and you'll see that it will give you this message that you have entered the sculpt environment and you'll have to click Finish Form to go back to Solid Modeling. And if you don't want this message to display anymore, then you can simply select Do Not Show Me This Again before you click OK. Now to start our earbud, we'll use a box. So I'll select the box in the toolbar, and then select the front plane and the center origin. I'll drag out with my mouse and I'll type in 15 millimeters, hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and I'll make the other side 15 millimeters as well. And I'll go ahead and make the depth 12 millimeters and then I'll hit enter to create the box. Now let's take a look at some of the basic sculpting commands you'll want to get used to. In the sculpt environment, you can think of it like manipulating clay or some sort of workable material. We're going to control all of these different faces and edges to push and pull and change their position in order to get the final outcome that we want. You'll see that if I just click on a face, it will select it, but oftentimes you'll want to select many faces or edges all at once. To select all faces in a row, you can select the first face and then holding down the shift key, I will double click on the second face and you'll see that it highlights everything in that row. So I'll do this again in another direction so you can see it once again. Now to select edges all the way around, all you have to do is double click on them. So if I double click on this center edge, you'll see that it highlights all the way around the object. Now, another thing that can be very helpful at times, especially if you want to select a large number of faces, is to use the Paint Selection tool. You'll find the Paint Selection tool under the Select menu or by activating it with the keyboard shortcut number three. If I select Paint Selection and drag over the object, you'll see that it will select everything in my cursor's path. Now the only problem with this is that I'm selecting edges along with the faces. So if I just want to select faces, I'll need to set the selection priority under the select drop-down menu to select face priority. If I go back up to the menu and select the selection filters, you'll see that it automatically changed it so we're only selecting faces. So at times, you may find it very helpful to manually select the type of objects you're actually trying to select. Then when you use the selection tool, you won't have to worry about selecting other objects. Now if I clear out this selection and paint over it once again by dragging over the object with my cursor, you'll see that this time it only selects the faces of the object, not any of the edges or other elements. Alrighty, so now that we've covered some of the fundamentals of selecting faces and edges, let's go ahead and start sculpting an earbud. For the sake of simplicity in this very beginner demo, I'm going to make the earbud that is symmetrical. And before we start here, I'll reset the selection filters to select all. 
and then I'll change the selection back to window. Now I'm going to double click on the center line to select the entire edge and I'm going to right click and select edit form. The edit form feature is the main feature you'll be using in the sculpt workspace. It gives us all these icons here which allow us to move and manipulate the object in all different directions. I'm going to look at the object from the front view and then I'll select this horizontal slider and I'm going to drag it upwards. And you'll notice that as I drag this handle upwards, it's changing our box shape to have a more rounded surface on both the top and the bottom. And I'm just going to hit enter and then I'll repeat these steps. I'll double click on the horizontal line and then right click and select edit form. Then once again, I'll drag the vertical slider until I like the shape. And if I need to, I can go back and adjust the other direction. Now that we have the rounded shape, we'll want to pull the shape to the right to make the length of the earbud. I'm going to select this back face and double click on the face above it. Again, because this will select the entire row. And I'm also going to hold down the shift key and select the four back faces. Then I'll right click and select edit form. And this time I'm going to use the arrow icon. So if I drag the arrow icon, you'll see this icon allows us to push and pull the length or the height of an object. And I'm just going to drag it until the length seems about right for an earbud. And then I'll click OK. At this point, I want to create the cavity for the earbud. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all four sides of the front faces. This time I'm going to use the circle icon in the middle that has three triangles when I hover over it. Now this icon will either resize your faces or it will create new faces. If I simply select it and drag in and out, you'll see that it resizes the faces. But we'll also want to create some more faces here. So this time I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and I'm going to drag in with my mouse. And you'll see that now we went from having four faces to a bunch of faces here. So this is really important. You can see all the difference it makes holding down the Option or Alt key. Whereas if we just selected the icon and moved our mouse, it would simply resize the faces. Holding down the Option or Alt key again, I'm going to slide this in a bit further, making some more faces here. And you can see that our earbud is starting to get a more defined front curve here. Now what the Option or Alt key does is it tells Fusion 360 that you just want to manipulate the faces selected and not all of the faces around it. So if I look at the model from the right a bit more and then select the back arrow, you'll see that as I drag the arrow back, it's really changing all of these faces in the front here. But let me hit Command Z to undo. And if I do this once again while holding down the Option Alt key, you'll see that this time it's not changing the thickness or the position of these outer faces. So I'm just going to click OK. And now that the earbud cavity is created, I'll take a look at the back so I can start to create the plastic cylinder. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select the back four faces. And this time I'm going to right click and select the crease tool, which will create a crease or sharp edges between faces. Then I'll select the four faces again while holding down Shift. And I'm going to drag the center circle to make this shape a little bit smaller. And I'll go ahead and hold down the Option or Alt key to create some more faces. Next, I'm going to select the horizontal arrow. And while holding down Option or Alt, I'm going to push it back into the earbud. I'm going to let go of all the keys and then holding down Option Alt again. I'm going to drag the arrow back out. And you'll see that now we have the cylinder protruding from the front of the earbud. 
I can also hold down the Option Alt again and drag the center slider to create more faces and round over the edge of the cylinder. And I'm going to click OK. Now the last thing that we want to do is make the plastic piece that runs vertical from the horizontal cylinder. But before we start to drag the shape, I want to create some more faces, giving us a bit more control. So one thing that we can do is insert another edge, or this line here, when we need to have more faces. Now to do this, I'm going to double click on the edge to select it. Then I'm going to go to the Modify drop-down menu and select Insert Edge. And you'll see that the green preview line is where the new edge will go. So I can simply drag this slider to change the position of it before clicking OK. Now, if I look at the bottom, you'll see I have these extra faces here, so we won't mess up the earbud or the back of this cylinder shape. I'll go ahead and select these two faces while holding down Shift. I'll right click and select Edit Form, and I'm going to select the vertical arrow. Then, while holding down Option Alt, I'm going to drag down just a bit and release all keys, and then I'll hold down Option Alt again. And this time I'll drag it down quite a bit. Lastly, I'll hold down Option Alt and drag the center slider to square off this bottom a bit. And then I'm going to click OK. So you see now we have a nice and basic, very simple earbud shape that we sculpted in Fusion 360. Now, once you're satisfied with your sculpted shape, you can click Finish Form, which will convert it from a T spline model back to a solid body. So you'll see that now I'm automatically back in the model workspace, and I can now use the model tools to change this further if I needed to. So to wrap this video up, I want to remind you guys that in order to master the sculpt workspace, you really need to get used to holding down and selecting the right keys in order to take full control. Otherwise, it can be very frustrating. This first sculpt video was very entry level and it's a great place to start getting used to these commands. Now once again, if you'd like me to make an entire series on sculpting, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.